Hi, I'm Josh Miles, and I'm in the branding business. Now, that means that we work with our clients to help them uh, tell the stories of their brands. That means we're helping them position their brand, their company, their product or service in a specific place in their client's mind. That's through images or symbols or words or stories. Um, and doing that means that we have to really get inside of our clients' heads. So to do that, we ask our clients to lie down on the sofa and tell us their deepest, darkest secrets, metaphorically speaking, of course. So we take those secrets and we sort of mash that together and come back with something that people want to hear, people want to tune into, people want to see this on prime time. So my role is sort of one part talk show host and one part therapist. So one of the things that often comes out in therapy is sometimes to give our clients what they really need, sometimes we have to be able to save them from what they think they want. And that is a paradox. But that's not the paradox we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is the idea that sometimes your A-plus work is not always received or perceived as an A-plus. So let's go back with me, if you will, in the Wayback Machine to when I was 15 and a half years old in driver's ed. So with my driver's ed instructor riding shotgun, the gentleman was about a million years old. I'm not sure he could even see the stoplights or stop signs. Um, and my job basically was to help him run errands during the day. So we would take him to the dry cleaners, we'd take him to the bank, we'd take him to get donuts. And in between there, he was trying to give us some ideas of how to not kill everybody on the road. So as it turns out, I wasn't a very good driver's ed student. I uh, turned the wrong way down a one-way street. I was usually speeding. And on my very first day of driver's ed, I murdered a groundhog. <laughs> the thump, the thump, twitch, twitch. He was definitely dead. My instructor didn't even bat an eyelash just popping a donut in his mouth. At the end of our class, it was time to get our grades. And my instructor said, Josh, you're not an A driver, but I'm going to give you an A. So <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out even what that meant. But the important thing for me was on my report card, I had an A for my class. So sometimes, we receive a grade that perhaps we haven't actually earned, and sometimes we earn a grade that we don't receive. Now, why is that? Now, I think there's a couple reasons that we see that, especially in the professional world, when you're delivering a service. Um, and the, the ways that we're gonna talk about that today are maybe the words that we use, how we've positioned our companies, and the overarching experience. So let's talk first a little bit about words. So a little bit later in high school, our first day of senior year, I was in my literature class, and you know how when the room is dark and everybody's chatty, and then you have that moment where everybody just realizes the teacher has been there the whole time and he's really annoyed, and the silence just quickly falls over the room. So we realize our teacher is in the back corner of the dark classroom with his desk backed up as far as you could get and still be not in the wall. And he muses from the shadows, I'm thinking of a frog. I'm thinking of a frog. Somebody says, uh, like the amphibian, it's green, it hops around, uh, it eats flies, it says ribbit. Yes, that is a frog, but I'm afraid that's not the frog I was thinking of. I'm thinking of a frog. So someone else is brave enough to say, like, like the frog in your throat, you're trying to talk and you can't. Yes, that is a frog, but I'm afraid that's not the frog I was thinking of. I'm thinking of a frog. And the violin player in our class says, 
uh, that thing on the end of my bow. There's this little part, and that's, that's actually called a frog. Ah, thank you. That is a frog. But I'm afraid that's still, this went on for the entire class period. 60 minutes of what frog am I thinking of? Bell rings, class dismissed. The next morning, the lights are up. Our teacher's walking around like nothing happened. The bell rings, we begin class, and he goes straight into Chaucer. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What was the frog? You got to tell us what frog you were thinking of. And he said, you've mistaken the point of the exercise. It was not about what frog I was thinking of. It was about in my class and in life, even a word as obvious as frog, you have to make certain that your audience understands exactly what you mean. So sometimes when the experience goes south, maybe it's as simple as the words that we're using. Other times, perhaps it's more about positioning. So if you think about how your brand or your company falls in a market against all of your competitors, maybe we could map that. This is called, this is called a perceptual map. So you can map that on an X and Y axis. So on the left-hand side, you would see low price, cheap, and on the far right-hand side, expensive. At the bottom of the map is I sell and do everything under the sun, and at the top, you sell just one thing. So when we look at this graph, you notice there are a bunch of dots in the bottom left. So like in the retail world, who sells a ton of stuff for the cheapest price possible? Walmart is the first one that I always think of. But there are lots of competitors down there who are selling these commodity items for the cheapest price. Now if you think about at the opposite end of the grid, at the top right, this is where you find premium products and services. Fewer companies play in this space, they can charge whatever they want, and they just sell one or two things. Maybe Ducati, Ferrari, or Coach belong here. But most of us deal with this crowded middle. And most of us compete at about the same price, and most of us do a kind of a mix of stuff. So the challenge is, when you think about, am I in the commodity space? Am I a premium product or service? Or am I somewhere in this crowded middle? The constant challenge is, how do you differentiate yourself in that space and position yourself to the market? So sometimes maybe it's just the market doesn't understand how you're trying to position yourself. Other times, and I think maybe even most of the time, the problem is the experience itself. So if you'll go with me, uh, one last time through Josh's Wayback Machine to 1984. So this goofy kid in the middle is yours truly. And this thing in the back is an Akai reel-to-reel -reel tape machine that my dad bought when he was in the Navy. He was a radio man, and he loved messing around with this thing and just recording stuff. So when we were kids, he developed this character called the birthday wizard. And now, what the wizard would do is he would leave these mysterious messages on the tape player, and we would play them back. So he would say something like, if you're looking for a present that's sparkly and clean, maybe look inside of the washing machine. And my dad would hit pause, and I was so excited I would almost pee my pants. You know, I'd rush to the washing machine to try to find my gift. And I'd pull it out, and I'd bring it back to the family room, and I'd open it, and then we'd play the next, the next clue. So let's look at what happens um, to compare which is better. Is it the, the experience of getting the gift, or is it how awesome the gift is? So here we see, moments later, I'm holding the Star Wars Millennium Falcon. Yeah, right? <laughs> arguably the crown jewel of the 80s toy market. Any kid who's got a Millennium Falcon is pretty awesome. But look at the expression on my face. I'm happy, I'm pleasant, but I'm not ready to pee my pants anymore. Maybe there's a reason I look like I'm not about to pee my pants anymore. But if you compare the two expressions, look at how much more excited I am about the experience itself. This is for sure an A plus gift, but the experience is the thing that made it that much better. So think about if you're in the cable television market, if you're a dental office, or if you have to talk to anybody on customer support, 
How many of us ever look forward to those types of experiences? You know, nobody ever hires somebody or engages in a new service because they think it's going to suck. You're always pretty optimistic, so the curve of that experience starts out pretty good. So you're like, okay, I think I like this. And then you find yourself in the dental chair, perhaps with the best hygienist in the history of the universe, and she's talking to her buddy about letters and numbers that you have no idea what they're talking about and about what they did over the weekend like you're not even there. So she may be technically the best hygienist on the planet, but your experience is starting to fade. And by the end, she gives you the free floss and the free toothbrush and maybe a miniature tube of toothpaste and says, come back in six months. And maybe you feel a little bit better because you got some free stuff out of it. But what if you could identify those hiccups in the process and the experience and do something to make it better? So there's a company actually in Indianapolis called Dental Spa. And what they do is they actually offer um, headphones to listen to music while they're ge you're getting your teeth cleaned. They have televisions on the ceiling so you can watch Sports Center while you're reclined back. And they will give you a foot massage while you're getting your teeth cleaned. <laughs> this solves the dip problem. <laughs> so if you look at, at your own experiences, how can you identify ways to make your brand experience better for your customers and your clients? Another example is Seth Godin, who talks about his books as the souvenir for all of the media he re releases online. So people buy the books in droves who have already seen all of his stuff. So it's sort of like the idea of brand and reputation are synonymous. Both of those things have to be earned like a grade. So I would dare you to be bold and to be great and identify those areas that you can make your experience earned and an A plus just like the wizard. Thank you.